Don't you hate the way that we live in? God really wants more. If you live in low, you never see the top floor. What's up, fam? This is Scott Smith. Welcome back to the Time is Right podcast. We are so excited that you would take a little bit of time out of your day, evening, whatever time of the day you're listening to this, uh, to spend it with us here on Time is Right. Um, if you are new around here, this podcast is brought to you by Ripe Creatives. Um, and yeah, we are basically going to go back in time to share about something that Ripe Creatives was a part of. And uh, we are super excited to tell you about March 22nd, 2022. That's where we're going back in time today. Um, it was a Tuesday evening. There was a place called High Point Performance Venue that we spent a lot of time at over the past few years, but we did something very special on this particular date, and it was a creative's concert featuring our good friend, Doc Hero, who happens to be in the room with us at the Podcast Palace here in Upper Darby with Top Mob Productions. Doc Hero, welcome to the podcast. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling great. I'm good. Thanks for being here. Um, Also in this room, as I just alluded to, is Mr. Top Mop himself, Jared Moses. What's good? What's good? Feeling good? Feeling great. I always laugh at your intros because, like, the way you start, it's like, let's go back in time to a time when, and it's like, it's it's like an old Twilight, uh, (laughs) the 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 Twilight show. (laughs) Oh yeah, Twilight series. (laughs) You're like setting up scenarios and everything. I'm like, wow. (laughs) Hey man, that's what we do on this on this pod. You know, that's what makes us unique and different. We're not just having random conversations. We're talking about a specific thing. Um, and you guys know this because you're here. This isn't your first episode. You've listened to other things on Hopefully. Time is Ripe, so you know what this is about. Um, but yeah, this is, a, this is a really fun episode for me um, because we get a chance to have you know somebody I've known for a long time on, um, but also somebody that we got to do something specifically you know, together in March of 2022. Um, which I, I just think is going to be a great episode. So thank you guys both for being here. Shout out to Mr. Top Mop for putting this whole thing together. We appreciate all of your work behind the scenes, yep. my friend. Um, cool. So let's. I'm just going to share a little bit about creatives so people understand what that is because this is our first episode, maybe our second, about creatives. Um, so just to kind of give an idea there and then talk about creatives concert and then we'll get into to more of kind of the whole story of the night. Sound good? Yep. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, creatives is, you know, maybe some people might say it's half of what Ripe Creatives is. Uh, It's probably more like a third. Seems like we do a lot of other things as well. But creatives is our Tuesday night platform in the city um, that we've built for other artists outside of just our own community. Um, And how creatives is most known in the city of Philadelphia is being an open mic space, Um, a space for artists to be able to come, to sign up. I think we do a really great job at our creatives open mics, whether they be peers or cafes or whatever the heck we call something because we make up names all the time. Um, but our open mic event is kind of the, the bread and butter of what we do. Um, but during the pandemic, we were doing uh, Instagram open mics and you know just kind of wanted to do something to support artists in a tangible, practical way. And so we piloted a concept back in you know 2020 called a creatives concert. And we just did them on Instagram where we went live from the Creatives Philly page and an artist went live with us and they got a chance to perform not just one song or two songs or something, but an hour's worth of their original content. And then we use that to be able to raise money to support them and, uh, you know, just try to be a blessing to artists in the midst of not being able to gig in real life. Um, Those went really well. And in 2021, we decided let's take this thing online and uh, launch uh, creatives concerts, which on YouTube, which we did our first one with Leah Ren. Shout out to her, who's in the ripe community. We love her. Um, that was actually at the end of 2022, 2020, and uh, we continued doing the YouTube streams until the world opened back up. And then our first official creatives concert was in September of 2021 with Matthew Schuler. And I remember leaving the Matthew Schuler concert, and Doc Hero was on our list. Like that yes. night we started making a list of people we wanted to have a creatives concert with. And Doc Hero was 100% on that list that night. And so it took us a few months to pull it off. Um, but in March 22nd, 2022, we finally pulled off the creatives concert featuring Doc Hero. Um, Doc, 
yeah, we love you. So just know it wasn't like we didn't want to have you right away. But we had to build up the momentum, you know, to be able to have the Hero Island experience <laughs> that you bring. So um, just for the sake of the audience a little bit, can you just introduce yourself, you know, share a little bit about our relationship and how we got connected, all that kind of stuff? How did we get connected? Um, well, who are I you think- first? I'm Doc Arrow. That's who I <laughs> like, Where you live, Doc? <laughs> from West Philadelphia. I didn't know we was going to do the whole cliche thing, so my, my bad. You I'm said from he West... wasn't doing an intro. Right. I said <laughs> we're not doing did. an interview, but you still, <laughs> listen, there's people here that support Rep Creatives. They partner with what we do, and they they haven't met you yet. Okay. Well, you know? I'm I'm Doc Arrow. I'm from West Philadelphia. Born and, Born and raised. raised. Yep. Hey. The playground where I spent most of my days. You know, um, I'm an artist. I've been an artist for quite some time. Um, I have a couple projects out. When I like the one I go out and perform, I have a live band. Uh, DJ Ant and the crew. Shout out to DJ Ant. Y'all showing some love. We love him so much. One of the most loyal guys I've ever known. Is he a six Enneagram? Is that what he is? I, I don't know. I, this is the wrong group of people to ask what Enneagram type he is. But I mean, I'm an fine. eight. But... You're a challenger. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I would not expect that. <laughs> My mind is blown. Okay. But yeah, Ann is a six. Six, seven, I think. Yeah. That's my guess. Be, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, six, six seven, seven for sure. I, that's what I think. You know, Jared's like, I don't even know what type I am. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make you take this test. Oh, no. Yeah, we love Ant, both of us. Uh, I, I got introduced to Ant through Anthony Washington, loved the poet. Probably like 20, I don't know. 12, 13, or something like that. But as long as I've known you, and has been your DJ as well. Yeah, that's, yep, for, for a hot minute. And I remember meeting you, I think it was like very random, if I can remember. Um, you was at the Philly Project, I believe, right? Is that the yeah, first time we met? I feel like we might have randomly met at the Underground. Or was that just Drew? It might have been Drew. Because I, I, like I, under, I, like I, I feel like I feel like I didn't start going to there. the Underground until... I feel like it came like after that. For okay. Sure. Yeah. So I ran into Drew Smith. Shout out to the Dreamer. And um, yeah, he. he there, I mean, there's a long story. We got to have Drew on sometime to tell that <laughs> <Right>. story. <laughs> but Drew used to get in my DMs on YouTube, <laughs> which is like such a weird statement. And that, yeah, that's how I met Drew. That's the crazy part. No. Yep. Drew, the first time me and Drew had a conversation was on YouTube. Your relationship feels <laughs> like you guys grew up together. Like, that's how tight you two are, that I would assume that you, like, literally grew up together. I had no idea. He just cold, cold DM'd you like he did with me, too. Yeah, he was just, like, reaching out to me. He's like, yo, man, check out my music. You know, Let me know what you think. <laughs> like he was, like, encouraged me as an artist and stuff like that. And then I eventually, like, met him in person. That's crazy. <laughs> True. The, the YouTube DMer. Um, but yeah, I, 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 so I had this, you know, understanding of who Drew Smith was. And then we ran into each other in an event and I was working at the Philly Project. And I was like, yo, Drew, can you, um, you know, come through and perform for the students? I actually knew your music already. At that point, I'd heard your stuff. And then Drew comes to the Philly Project with Ant, of course. Um, and then you were there. And out of nowhere, I heard a song, Whistle While You Walk. And I was like, wait, is that Doc Hero? <laughs> like, because I didn't know what Doc Hero look, looked like, but I knew your music. And then you're on stage at the Billy Project. I was like, wait, my mind is blown right now. I was like, how is Doc here? Um, but that was, the, yeah, that was the beginning of our relationship. That was like 16, 15, 2015, 2016. Yeah. It's a long 2016, time. 2016, yeah. Yep, 16. And we've been running around ever since. Yeah. It's been good. It's been good. Yeah. I mean, Jared's just looking at us like I was in college. I was Jared's like I was eleven years old. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to figure things out. I was building logos in (laughs) twenty (laughs) sixteen. No, that's that's what's up. But yeah, I remember so we hit you up, I don't know, probably at the end of the year, twenty twenty one, saying, Hey, we want to do a creative concert with you. And you were like, Yeah, of course, man, I would love to do that. Um I think is what you said at the point at that time, right? You were, yeah, yeah. You were, you I was all yeah. When I feel like when I responded, I was like, yeah, I would, I would definitely want to do something like that, you know. So we, we were kind of looking at the schedule and and picking dates and all that kind of stuff, and 
you know, kind of said, okay, we're going to do it around the end of March. Um, but I think what's kind of funny, nuanced part of this story is like from the time you said yes until March 22nd, a lot was going on just in your life, vocationally and professionally. A whole lot. (laughs) A whole lot was going on. Um, even just kind of like thinking back at everything, like I had told you, I would have never like made no type of agreement on doing this concert at all because, um, at my church, uh, change, we was like kind of like a pop up church and everything like that. And then during the pandemic, of course, like all the venues and stuff was closed, so we started doing like you know having our services at um, inside of a home. And then out the blue, I felt like we had this opportunity to enter like this building. So we had went out, you know, saw a couple buildings, walked to this particular one. I was like, oh yeah. We like this is this is home. I feel like this is where we need to be, type of thing. I mean, Elijah agreed on it, um, and he told Ashley, and the rest was history. Um, but the moment you know we we got you know we got the word that you know it's everything, all the paperwork straight, we can enter the building. Now it's time to do some work. Yeah, I don't think any of us knew. <laughs> How many hours, how many days, how many blood, sweat, and tears that would, like, take in that process. Mm-hmm. And um, just, a, you know, a, it was just so much happening from that. Because, number one, I'm not a fan of construction at all. <laughs> so that was, like, so my on top of that, I'm, like, mentally frustrated right now. <laughs> yeah. And then a concert is coming up, and I'm I'm, like... As an artist, I pitch so much into my concerts yep. and just like thought, like themes, uh, presentation, um, preparation, like times 10. And I just feel like going into the concert, I'm like, I'm not ready. Like, I'm like, I'm mentally not ready. I'm not prepared. I'm, I'm not able to do the things that I would normally do for a concert. I, I just don't. Yeah. I just don't have the time nor the mental like space to even you know be heavily involved like how we i would normally be yeah i I, that was the first time i've ever seen you like that like the day of an event dog was like like i'm happy to be here but he was written all over his face he's like i don't know how this is gonna go (laughs) like i've rehearsed you know we we got our stuff together like i'm sure it'll be fine but he you felt like bad that you couldn't promote it as well or get prepared as well as what you normally do because you hold yourself to an absurdly high standard from a performance standpoint. I mean, from every standpoint, mm-hmm. I'm sure. But I've always noticed, like, man, Doc live shows yeah. is different. There's an energy. It comes out in the music. Yeah, it comes out in the, the live sets. Like, where, yeah, there's people. I'm not going to name drop names, but there are people with bigger followings, right, that will not perform after you. Yeah. Hundred percent, because they don't want to. They don't want to have to follow your live set, and that was the first time I ever saw you. You know, going into a show, not like sure how it was going to go exactly. Um, and yeah, that building. Shout out to them. Change yeah. Change Church, the Story Factory. The story Factory, baby. There's a lot going on, you know, behind <laughs> the scenes. Maybe one day you'll hear about it on a future episode. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean you. <laughs> That was basically your entire winter Yeah, was just working at the building. I working would walk in. It. These guys had have hazmat suits on, spray painting, ceilings. Oh, yeah, I forgot I wore one of those. Yeah, you wore one of them, Johns. You had the sprayer. Yeah, had the sprayer. The spraying ceilings, like, all black and everything just for hours on end. Mind you, like you said, it was the winter, and it was, like, no heat in there. So it was, like, 35 degrees in there? <laughs> it was 30 degrees in there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It was so bad. terrible. That's it was ridiculous. Bad. So yeah, that that I love the fact that that's a part of this story because to say, look, I don't know what's going to happen. I feel underprepared, and then to name the concert went so well. Oh my goodness! It was an unbelievable experience for people who came into that room, and um, so yeah, to like frame it through the lens of like, I don't know how this is going to go. I feel weak. And I feel like, you know, that's, God says, right? Like, my power is made perfect in your weakness. You felt weak coming into that show. I'm not as prepared as I normally am. I'm not as ready to go. And then 
to see what happened on stage that night, I think was was absolutely incredible. Yeah, um, like because like even like the uh, the night before, I think that's when I had like the uh, rehearsal, and in the rehearsal, I was like, okay, this this feels kind of good. And I think like even during the rehearsal, like we quite didn't know exactly what we wanted to really do as far as the set because I think. It was like a couple minutes before I'm like literally about to walk out and I text Ant like kind of like shuffle some stuff around. And I wish I could have like a camera on Ant when he probably got that text <laughs> <laughs> But it was just, you know, like, but he's kind of used to that from me because I, I, I normally do that if I'm like filling a room. And I'm like, I think we need to switch something up. And I'm like. He's like, oh, I said, a quick text. Yeah. He said, put the phone in your pocket so you can't, you can't get the text back. <laughs> like, like I saw him uh, recently, and I when I sent the text, I'm, I actually got the like visually like look at him while he's like looking at the text, and he just kind of like was like searching the room for me, and he just like made a face like, I'm gonna beat you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much. But um, but. During that frustrating time and during those moments, like, I literally had to just, like, lean on God because I feel like I've never been in that type of position as far as, like, feeling the way I felt in a concert. So I'm like, hey, hey, God, like, I don't, I have nothing, you know. I have nothing else to give. You got to, you got to give me something. You got to show up. You got to, you got to come through. And he did. (laughs) He did, you know. He did, man. And I, I, it's amazing to me because I think even from the, the run a show, even as you're like feeling flustered or not as prepared, right? Mm-hmm. For me as an audience member in the run of show, you know, like it was great. Like it felt like one of the most cohesive concerts where like there were moments in it that felt so intentionally designed. And I think that's just a testament to God's like grace on it, right? It was like, I hope this works. And then it did so so well maybe even in ways that other concerts that have had so much more planning didn't connect as much in terms of the fluidity of it the flow is amazing i remember like i don't know if it actually was but it felt like one of the shortest concerts just because of how well everything just went together and it like just slipped by without me realizing like wait we're done (laughs) was that the last song why why are they singing happy birthday (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah it, it was it was very yeah how kai like i like how crazy it was in my mind it was definitely like when it started it was a smooth like night yeah it was like very smooth and it was like a big relief like oh, okay everything's good we made it but even like on the uh production and like things i would have like done or prepared for like i probably would have been talking to sean for hours and we'd have been staying up for hours but him and Jerry just work so well on the fly. It's incredible. They like I they just understood the vibe and the production part of it was just like insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was it felt like it was like programmed. You know? Yes. That that's props to Sean, because I remember I'm sitting back there, I'm like mixing the board. I don't even lean over, I just yell, Sean! Give me a color. And I'm like reaching up to mess with the lights while he's doing that. He's like, blue, blue, blue. And I'm like smacking buttons on the computer. <laughs> See, that's the stuff, you know, you don't it's, know it's behind the scenes. part of the story, you know? man. <laughs> um, just so people understand, Sean Prez, uh, Stars and Bars Creative Co., one of our dear friends. Uh, I think I met Sean through Doc and Drew. Yeah. I think I might have actually met him a little bit before you guys um, at something. But he runs a creative company. He does Philly wedding films. He's a videographer. Um, and he has a lot of strengths. I mean, he can do graphic design, cover arts. He, he can do, he has his own podcast. Um, but I think his greatest strength is uh, design, like production. Production, call live shots show. On it. It's so, I mean, you can just trust him with a vision and he just can execute it. Yeah. Like I remember the, it was like an old story about like, yo, I want old TVs. On stage, yep. I want to turn this into like an 80s vibe or 90s vibe. And he like went around and just picked up two, two TVs, TVs off yep. the street and then like ran them all together to make this crazy set for one of the Mayhems or FOFS things. So yeah. Sean's just like that. He just he can pull things off and execute things so well. Um, RipeCreatives.com, our website. Sean actually built that website um, for us, uh, you know, back whenever we launched it. And then is working on the re- the rebuild as well. 
Um, but yeah, Sean's a beast. Yeah. And Sean and Jarrett, yeah. your first time working together was actually on Good Soil, good right? Soil. Yes. And you yeah. guys hit that it off. That was my first then. time actually meeting him. Was good oh, soil. really? Yeah. I had oh, never, wow. met, never him met him up to that. Nope. I had no idea who Sean was <laughs> going into Good Soil. That is crazy. They worked so well together that night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But then it, it panned over to the right. Creators concert super well. It, it like helped. Like if I hadn't sure. worked with him on Good Soil, it probably would have been hard to like communicate at the concert. And a lot of it's trust, right? Yeah. And like I was ready to trust him right off the bat. I was like, yo, bro, you got the designs up there. Just give me a little guidance. We're going to match it up. We're going to make it look good. And it really helped that he knew your show. Like You guys have worked together right. for so long. Same thing with the band. That's part of the reason why it worked so well. Everyone just had experience with you that they were able to implement because they're like, I know what this song is supposed to be like. I know what this is supposed to be like. I know how he likes to flow. And everyone was able to match that. And I just had to get up to speed with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, it's real. And who, Styx was in your band. Who else was in your band? Uh, Styx was uh, on kit. Um, we had Mike on bass. And, of course, DJ Ant. Yep. It was a good that little three-piece team. My little three-piece monster i call it you know it is a monster team <laughs> sticks is so good yeah he's mike nasty. killed it too yeah mike and ant i mean it's just he's a robot it's just always there <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't miss no he don't the other cool thing um like your your show had moments in it like obviously you're performing live right yeah. mm-hmm. but you guys kind of first of all you brought random people up on stage it was like Going to a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the heads up on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, Jared had no idea any of this was happening. I just look up Jared. and I'm like, why does that guy have a mic? Why does he have a mic? And I'm like <laughs> smacking <laughs> buttons on the board. <laughs> like, like, who is that? supposed to have one. Sean's like, that's Deuce. It's like, Deuce Who's is on Deuce? the song. Who is Deuce? <laughs> Deuce. <laughs> Right, come to think about it, if you did, if you just met Sean, you probably had no clue about Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious <laughs> oh man but yeah i mean the fact that yeah i mean that just tells you because that would have been a conversation we would have had ahead of time here's a run of show here's what who comes right. up with what but yes. doc was just in a cave spray painting <laughs> ceilings for <laughs> months man <laughs> building these little tiny houses in the <laughs> offices and uh yeah but i there was there were so many different elements to it. Deuce coming up, Drew coming up, Sean even left you know, the lighting booth at one point was on stage going crazy. Um, but I love that there was a dip in the middle that was so stinking cool, man, where you turned the concert into a listening party. Oh, yeah. And I just, even from the sense of the feel of the room where people got to like go crazy and then sit and then get to experience you experiencing your music. Right, yeah. Which was so, ah, man, that was so cool. Because it wasn't just like, hey, guys, listen to this, check it out. You're on stage. We're still watching you. And you still have a mic on, right? That you kind of can like ad-lib in to what you're listening to. But just have it like watching you with your eyes closed on stage, just rocking out to what's ahead, the music that's coming out. Or they might even be out by the time this podcast releases. But that was so special, I think, for the audience, Mm -hmm. where it just wasn't high energy the whole way through. It was like there were these moments where we stop and we get to like listen intently and put our even critique, you know, ear on to be like, what do we think? You know, are we connoisseurs of music now? (laughs) And the songs that you played were just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. They're really, really good. Like the new stuff just sounds great, man. And everybody remarked on that. T Walla was there. Shout out to him. One of the, you know, kind of big producers in yeah. Philly was there. <clears throat> and he was like, dude, these are fire. Like these are amazing, amazing tracks. Um, so yeah, what did you feel like in terms of that listening party moment? Was that something like you always knew you wanted to do that, or was that kind of No, so um that actually was a last second idea because I was originally, I was supposed to do those songs live, but again, I felt like we didn't have enough time preparation as a band, me as an artist to really like lock in with those songs. So I was in the back. I was like, yo, I need, I need a stool. I told Ann, I said, yo, I'm just going to do a listen party for this part. 
So I saw like the yellow stool that was like randomly sitting in the back. And I'm grabbed. I'm like, yeah, make sure yellow stool. Make sure, make sure y'all bring this stool, stool out. Stool doc. Set the stool out. We'll just do like a listening party. Like, see how it goes, you know, type of thing. It was. I, mean, so I didn't know good. what to expect from it, but it was literally like a last second like idea type of thing because I felt I didn't feel you know prepared prepared to do waves to do it to yeah. do all the new stuff live. I appreciate that so much. I mean, how many people would be like, well, we're, this is our opportunity to try to do it live. Yeah. And I'm sure it still would have been great. But I love the nuance of the night. Like that little piece of and it. And it made that night, part of that night really special. Because really I've never special. done anything like that before. So that was like a really like cool moment for me. It was a Kanye moment. Yeah. It was a very Kanye moment. <laughs> it was No, it was so good. Yeah, and I just, I mean, it's like we all are experiencing something that, we can't go stream. We can't go listen to again right now. Yeah. And just to create that kind of anticipation, I was just like, yo, this is genius from a music marketing perspective, from an artist perspective, like creativity perspective. Like this, it's crazy that you're saying like, look, I just wasn't prepared to do those songs live. So we just switched it up and did this instead because I wasn't prepared. Right. Because <laughs> I didn't have time because of the building and everything else. And it fit perfectly. And I think that that was just the story the entire night was you and Sean, like just working on the fly. Things look so good. The lights, we brought the movers, like high point had these random movers. Oh yeah. They, they were just four sitting in and storage. Like the, the, in the weeks before when we were doing the gallery, I'm like pulling those out and you and Emily are looking at me like, what are you doing? We're here to talk about the painting. So I was like, yeah, 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 you do that. And I'm like <laughs> plugging in the movers. I came saying I was going to be a part of that meeting, but then I just checked out mentally and was playing with lights. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to get ready for doc show. Okay. I'm here to get ready for doc show. But like, yeah, this like is the one I get to go. We got to try out new stuff that we had never done before in that space and um that was the first one we really pushed the hazer too yeah we'd the never really awesome. gotten it out other than good soil right because we couldn't use it on peters just because it didn't fit it and then also singing like inhaling that could have messed with it i don't know for sure yeah i just yeah it, it's like you always try to pull out what is the message of the night and i just feel like man it's like god's strength and weakness that show went so well and it 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 shouldn't have in our natural sense, but obviously God like used you yeah. tremendously, used Jerry, used Sean, used Ant, used the band, um, and the energy in the room was crazy. Oh my goodness, it was amazing! Like all the way around, the energy from the hype moments to those like very chill moments, like even um, playing those like records for the uh, listening part. Like even on the one song, I felt like. I'm like, yo, this is one of my heaviest songs. And it like you can feel the energy. I'm like, yo, you can literally hear a pin drop after that song. It was mm -hmm. like really crazy. Just the energy just all the way around. You know what I mean? Yep. I think it's worth noting too, like of all the creatives concerts, that is the only one where we went in where like we know there's gonna be so much energy. We didn't set up any chairs, right? There was nowhere like with chairs set up in the room, was there? I think we just. I think it was just had a, just a few chairs. It wasn't as many. I think it was in the back. It, yeah, like maybe the, the back, second like, half of the room. room halfway yeah, halfway, room halfway room point. Yeah. But like that's the only one where we had a space. Like we prepared to not have seats in any spots. Yep. Yeah, so we cool. definitely did. Yeah, we definitely did. Yeah, and I think even from. I thought it was super cool, and Doc, I don't know how much you even know this, but I'm telling you now. <laughs> The amount of people that came, like, was it a packed, packed house? No. Would it normally be if you had time to promote a show? Yes. But there was a lot of people that came. Yeah. And what I was impressed by was how many people, like, bought the support doc tickets. Like, there's, you know, a couple different ticket levels for creatives with our concerts where there's just, like, a general admission and then there's this, like, support doc. And I was blown away how many people, like, got the, the bigger ticket because the people, when people do support you, it is like they such support. a deep level of support for you because yeah, they know so. you and they care about you and they care about your music and care about your artistry at such a deep level. And that came out in the room with the energy and the dancing and the jumping up and down and people calling down your songs, right? And like rapping back at you while you're on stage. I thought that was so stinking unique. Um, but there was also a lot of people there that you didn't even know apparently. Yeah, it was a lot of people there I didn't I didn't, you know, I didn't know. 
So which is was, awesome too. Yeah, which is like like really like cool because even um when you did the segment about uh you know like support the artist tagged Instagram and everything like that um the pause moment right. Is it the segment that call we called that. it? The know. pause moment. I have no idea. Have we <laughs> breaks, heard a name whatever. The break, the breaks. Um, so like a, there was a, a, you know, quite few people that tagged me. Even a couple of people like sent me like videos just telling me, expressing me like how like they really enjoyed the show because they didn't really get a like, chance to like um, to talk to me because I was talking to so many people and yeah. trying to sell the merch, which thank you so much for supporting the merch, y'all. Like, that yeah. was that was another amazing part of that night as well. Yep. You know? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I just appreciate the way that you do all that investment stuff with the merch stuff, even like you do your merch right. And you came into that event like saying, Okay, the resources that you guys are supporting me to do this concert, I want to take those resources and invest them in my band to make the show the best it can be. Yeah. Right, because, I mean, everybody knows this. Like, creatives, we do not have a a ridiculous amount of resources. Mm -hmm. We try to steward everything and spread it out as far as we can. But for you to take the resources that we invested in you to do the show, to make the show the best it could be, and then, you know, the the back end is, like, your merch does really well, too, Mm -hmm. which I just think is, like, oh, this is a good picture of what stewardship can look like. Um, cause if you just walked up there and you're like, oh, I'm just here to get a check and do the show and get yeah. over with it. Nobody's going to grab your merch cause they, yeah, it was cool. And then leave. But people were so moved by what they experienced because it was so well done that they were like, I have to support this guy. I want something of his. I want to wear this thing, you know? It also helps that your merch looks good. <laughs> That's true. It's you not have well designed stuff. Yeah. It's not corny merch. Thank you. It's not corny merch, that's for sure. Definitely, there's some some corny merches out there, but that's not one of them. Um, but yeah, I just I really appreciated that, and yeah, and I, I think it's really really cool whenever people who come in they trust creatives enough to show up to somebody they didn't know, yeah, which and then is for amazing. those people to like say, "Yo, this was amazing!" Like I had no idea who Doc Hero Hero was before tonight, but now I do, and now I'm in. You know, which I think is the the goal there. Yeah, it goes to kind of like show like the you know the community and the the stage you definitely have built for like artists. You know what I mean, so it's like really cool to be able to bring in an artist and they promote to you know their crowd, but you're also able to pull out another crowd that might not know that artist. So yeah. big kudos to you guys over there. I appreciate that. Though. Right. That's been part of the right. whole collaboration right. goal. The creatives, creatives group and then whoever the artist group have combined and they intermingle and the creatives group becomes your group and your group partially becomes the creatives group and then we take that creatives group and put it at the next artist and it just keeps growing and growing. It keeps yeah. growing. That's how you grow things, man. Yeah, I mean, I, and it's no shout, like shot at any other you know venue spaces that do five, six shows a week. Not at all. But they can't really, you know what I mean? Like the venue itself isn't necessarily the draw as much as the the artist is doing a lot of that driving force. And we've always said, man, we're not going to do these every day. We're going to do these every week. But when we do them, we want to do them right. And that comes and with wanna... the relationships you've built, all the personal connections that you have with everyone. Like there's not an artist that you don't know by name that you can, that you feel like you can't just like call them and talk for a couple minutes. All right. Yeah. No, that's true. And that, but that's also who we want to put on the stage too. Exactly. You know, I think that there's like, yeah, my heart for creatives concerts was never let's go out and try to get the biggest artists we can so that we can have the most amount of people in the room. It was how do we leverage a platform that we're creating to serve people that we believe in that are really doing it, that are living a life like for the Lord in their artistry. Whether that's overtly Christian artistry or kingdom artistry, or whichever, that's fine. But their lifestyle is trying to follow Jesus and wanting to make him known in the earth. How do we love those people and serve those people well? And even those pause segment breaks or whatever, we I don't know. We should probably come up with a name for those. But something we do at the concerts is we literally take a break in the middle of, like after the you know third song, after the sixth song, after the ninth song. And we just try to do practical things to support the artist in the room. And that comes from really conversations with you years ago. You probably don't even remember this. 
But um, yeah, I just realized that that was, that was actually a doc idea was wrestling through how do you get the audience to actually like follow you on Instagram at the show. They want to. There's a. There's not like oh, I don't want to follow them. Right. Obviously, you came to the show, but you just forget, and then it's out of sight, out of mind. And then maybe you're never into that algorithm. So it's like literally, I'm just standing on stage for 30 seconds, and I'm saying, "Hey, everybody, get out your phone right now. You're gonna follow Doc Hero, and you're gonna like his last six posts. And that liking of those posts is what is gonna." make you see Doc's next, po- next yes. post. I don't know if you've posted since <laughs> because you don't use Instagram very much. But I don't. You know? It's, 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 part, it's part of the brand. Yeah, it's part of the brand. It's, it's not part of, using it's part Instagram. It's part of the brand. Hero-wise, Cause I'm, no I only want to. Because I only want to, like, I just want to post great, like, content. That's yeah. all. And it's just hard to just corner. kind of just, like, I'm not the guy to, like, you know, post you, like, post what I'm eating Every five mm-hmm. seconds, so it's it's just very hard. It's a challenge for me to like put all content that I really want to put out. I respect it. Like I can't wait until I get the clips from this the, this concert. Like that's the kind of content I want to put out. Speaking of which, on the YouTube, Ripe Creatives, check them out. Because if you're like, oh man, you guys are really selling this thing, go watch it. Go tell us it wasn't amazing. Like it was such a great night. Um, you can actually go check it out and enjoy it for yourself. And even something to add to that night, um, just what you guys do for artists as far as, like, the concert portion of it. So I'm so used to, like, putting my, on my own events and stuff like that. But y'all lighten the load so much. And just to be able to come, like, to a venue and literally just focus on just the music part of it. Which is, like, it's so much value, like, so much... um so much like an artist can get out of that, mm-hmm. like those moments and those nights, like door concert, especially like if you've never been on your own concert before. Right. But I feel like what you guys do with that concert is like the artist can like take it on, and like it's it's my show, but I'm I'm not doing all the the legwork for it. Right, you, you know? don't have to worry about the door, you don't have to worry about the the vendors, you don't have to worry about the merch. Right, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's it's, good to hear because that is our heart there. And then because, you get good content from it too. So it's like it's like the best of both worlds. Like as an as an artist that always crazy. did stuff like on my own. So it's like I'm used to, oh man, I gotta find a video guy. I gotta find somebody to handle the door. I gotta find time to have a hurts. Like just so much like chaos goes into it. But that night y'all built something so well, I'm like, wow, I feel like I've never been in that type of like moment where it felt like, you know, it was a concert design for me, but I didn't have to do so much for it. Mm-hmm. That's a shout so. out to Joe, Raf, Emily, Emily, Mallory. Mallory, everybody. I mean, the whole yeah, team. Man. Shout out to y'all, whole entire team, yeah. man. I really appreciate y'all. Yeah, and I, I think that that's, that's so good to hear, like to be affirmed in it, because I think that that has always been our heart is like, this is to serve this particular artist mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a practical way. Because the end goal is the end goal is this, right? It's yes to serve the artist, but it's also to think who has the most potential to do really effective ministry tonight at the end of the show. Yeah, is it the door people? Is it the guy vending? Is it Scott the host? No, it's the artist, right? You yeah. should not have to, as the artist, do anything other than love people. And when somebody says, "Yo, that song," like really broke something in me and you get to pray with them or have a conversation or offer encouragement or hope or healing or whatever it is then you can do that because you don't have to worry about how do i move all this merch or you know is the car getting packed up or no that stuff's getting taken care of so that you can do the most effective thing after a show which to me is do real ministry yeah have real conversations even from a networking standpoint like you don't feel like, oh man, now I gotta, I gotta grab this, I gotta grab this, I gotta make sure this guy gets what he needs. No, spend time with people. Spend time, with you know. People. And then, I mean, I think we we were there late after. Yeah. Me, Jarrett, you, right? Did you leave early that night? I feel like you were there late. I was there late because I know I had to set some early. stuff back up. Yeah. Yeah. Were there any like away. people that you interacted with that you felt like that was that was really important or 
like memories on that front? Just like conversations you had at the end of the night at all? Um, yeah, I had a, I mean, I had a ton of conversations, um, with a couple of people. I know I had the con. I can't remember the person's name, but I remember having a conversation with them about the the song that I played during one of the songs I played during the listening party, America. Yeah. And they were just saying how like, you know, how that song like really like blessed them, something they was like struggling with and just for me to be able to still open up like, you know, it's something I was like struggling with and something I was frustrated with. And this is kinda like how I got over this process during this like time and moment. They was like it was just like they just felt free in that moment. Like they felt like release. Right. And and just You're to, giving language to such a difficult moment in time, right? George Floyd, post George mm-hmm. Floyd. And you're giving artistic expression to what you were going through and what you were feeling, which for a lot of people, they still haven't been able to fully right. process the the experience of that whole season of life. And then you're giving them all of this emotional like expression where it's like, oh, that's what I felt. That's that's what I needed. I needed that song right. in that season. Now it's actually even better for me to have it in this moment because it's it's allowing me to process it looking back. But that's I mean that's what art does, right? Yeah, because it, it, that's the beauty of art. Because um, I know at you know many times as it, it's as, as it was displayed in the world, like we can react in anger. But I was trying to figure out a way, like how can I react, like you know being upset about it but not reacting to anger but do it in a way you know i'm hurt and people have some type of like understanding mm-hmm. you know yeah it was, it's, a, it's a great song i mean all those the listening party songs were amazing and the whole concert was i i know for me i think my favorite moment was the last song and just like the 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 going out with a bang <laughs> oh man because Doc does, <laughs> Doc's shows are just lit, and they are ridiculously live, and you just have no idea what's going to happen. But at the end, like everybody in your whole team, Comes on Drew's on the Drew is in the the crowd, like trying to be incognito the whole night, and then and out then of he nowhere, just, he's up there. Jerry was probably in the back, because like, I didn't even know he people? was there <laughs> until he got on stage. I, I felt bad because it was about like halfway through the song. Sean's like, "Yo, I don't hear Drew." I was like, "There's someone else up there." <laughs> I couldn't even see him. Everyone was jumping around, and he was like standing over on the side. And I'm just like, "Oh my god, he has a mic!" And I'm like trying to figure out which mic he has. Yeah, it was I felt bad. I didn't get Sean. him in the house very well. <laughs> At that a, point, it's, a whole just, party, it's just the end. It's it was just, just noise. Just we were just there. <laughs> The, just wilding the, out that moment. the fake ending and then Sean randomly had like a pillow or something. I don't even know what it is. Oh yeah, like Sean Sean stuff. Sean has a thing with that song. Like and I always, and I always feel like when if Sean does something at the end of that song, it it kinda like gives a signature of like this is one of the best concerts mm-hmm. we we've we've done. Like <laughs> it's all like one time he like pitted like he randomly was on stage with like a cone on his head. <laughs> so he does something wild. What are you doing? <laughs> he always does something wild on that song. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, he like yeah. had this random pillow thing, like threw it out. See, of I didn't the see crowd. that. I didn't oh, see yeah, that part. He had this gigantic yellow triangle pillow. I don't even know where, where he got you get it. the pillow I have, from. I literally to this day have no idea he where had to it came from. It, I think I've never <laughs> seen that pillow <laughs> in High Point ever. I gotta call him. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he got Wait, it. No, you know I'm what it was? It was one of those like plastic foam things from the, the playroom kid, in the back for like the, the, the little kids, like the preschool and under kids. So where did he get it from? Was it their back, back with- room? He he like left me at one point, and I didn't know where he went because I just turned and he was gone. I was like, "How does this big man move this fast and this quietly?" <laughs> but he's gone, and then. I see him like on stage with that pillow, just throwing it at people. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Is that in anywhere in like the content, the video? I'll, I'll we'll have to look be for hunting it. for it. <laughs> we'll have to look for that. <laughs> that yeah, is it was, funny. It was so good, man. Um, we really appreciate you, Doc. And it's been you know an honor to to run the race with you um, these last you know five six years, man. I mean, so. You know, even just to kind of be a little bit vulnerable, right? Like mm-hmm. I step out in faith and I raise support 
to do artistry. And a big part of that was because of our relationship. Like what I'm doing today in a lot of ways is connected to our friendship because of the conversations we've had over the past six years about artistry and ministry and the effectiveness of artists to do ministry, but how resources is so difficult and how sometimes like you invest more than you could ever get back as an artist. Yeah. And like this doesn't really make sense whenever you know what you're doing is effective for the kingdom and effective for young people and for the next generation and people who are in these types of spaces. Like you get to rub shoulders with people and be a light. And it's like, man, what if artists were treated like missionaries? And I mean, we had this conversation, yeah. you know, even um, many times, you know, many, many times. <laughs> and in a lot of ways, me stepping out in faith to say, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to, you know, invite my support network that was supporting me in ministry for the last 10 years and say, will you jump into this journey with me to see if this is a real thing, to see if this could be an effective way to invest in God's work in the earth through artistry, like launch it. I don't think, I don't think ripe creatives as a ministry gets launched without our friendship. Wow. Genuinely. Um, you know, I was a part of the Ripe team with Dan and everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like, but in the, in the sense of like taking the leap of faith to say I want to do this full time, God, could you provide for it? Um, I don't. I actually don't know if I do this without you know the hundred hours worth of conversations, conversations we've had. that we had about yeah. You know, so thank you for that investment in us. Um, we definitely wouldn't be doing Time is Ripe today without Jarrett. So thank you, Jarrett, thank you. for uh, making sure that this is a thing that we're doing and producing and creating. Yeah. Um, and thank you for listening, audience, uh, whoever you are. I know a lot of you guys are supporters of Ripe Creatives. And so I just want to say thank you for making not just this podcast happen, but Creatives Concerts yeah. and Good Soils and Galleries and you know, trips that we've taken to go perform other places. Like everything that Ripe does is because of the generosity of you um, that listen to this podcast. And so um, if you're one of the few people that are here just listening and you've never partnered with us before and you'd like to consider doing that, um, the easiest way to do that is through ripecreatives.com. Um, there's a give button that you can jump on and, and find the level or uh, frequency that, that works best for you and your family or, or however you want to make that happen. Um, that's super appreciated. We don't have like a Patreon or anything like that. All the resources that we get uh, help us to be able to do more things like Creatives Concerts featuring Doc Hero um, in the future. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. And I feel like this is awesome, man. Um, yeah, anything else you guys want to say before we sign off today? Um, I would like to just say thanks to all my supporters and my community that just rallied behind me. Um, you know, definitely everything I do as an artist, like it's not possible without you guys. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the whole right community too as well. Thank you Big guys, fix. man. We appreciate you too, Doc. You're basically part of it with how much you're around, bro. Oh yeah. Right. I feel like I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, a part of right. And I'm not a part, I'm not officially a part of right, but I'm but a part of right. You're a part of right at the same time. <laughs> I mean, you never know. When I, you when never I, know. When we first were playing the concert, I was like, I don't know who Doc is, but everyone's talking about him in a way that I I am interested in meeting him. I can't wait for it. And now, like, <laughs> it, now less than a year later, know you so much better. Right. Yeah. yeah. So even like from good you know soil. the the good good soil, like kind of was that kind of our uh, our start of like really like being around each other and building our friendship and then even from like the concert like from there it, it just yep. yeah. and it's just been taken and you off. guys are in the delco delco boy chat or whatever right he's not but we should get him in it well he lives down this way i mean he's not far from here i don't control the group chat I don't <laughs> control <laughs> listen That's i'm, I'm not in the delco boy That's chat because i live in my area so i'm not who ate it I don't, anyway. know they, I don't know if they're going to let me in the Delco yeah, part because I'm in West Philly. In West Philly. They're not going to let you. <laughs> not gonna you, let ain't, you. you ain't getting you know, in that Delco. Delco's like its own thing, man, you know? Yeah, whatever. I love they Delco, got their, They got their own rules and regulations over there. I love Delco, though. But, yeah, thank you for everything, Doc. And, um, and yeah, like, I, I think I can say this pretty confidently. There will be more episodes with you 
in the oh, future yeah. because right. uh, we've done a few things. We've done a few things since March twenty second. Two amazing couple. things. And there's a a new a relationship, new, another new a thing, new, <laughs> another new new thing that I don't know when those episodes will happen because we got a lot of catching up to do right now. But they will be happening. Though. They well, will be it, happening. So the Easter egg. Easter we, egg. Dro- we dropped the Easter egg during this. Uh, Podcast. See if yeah. you can figure it they out. They might they might pick up on it. Who knows? Yeah, I mean there's just so much ahead. So and thank you again, seriously, people who partner with us and give to support ripe creatives. None of this is possible without you guys. So uh we really, really appreciate it. And uh yeah, until next time, stay right. Stay right.